Clatties, T Birds, just happen to be watchers of my shh. My name is Jimmy Pink. I wasn't feeling this episode at all. quickly tonight. I wasn't even planning on drinking. This episode made me drink. The episode, the situation, a whole host of shit. So, number one, before I get negative, because I'm going to get real negative, spoiler alert, because this episode was fucking trash. Number one, I would like to thank the people that donated to my cash app um, over the last couple of weeks. Um, I have to figure out a way that it alerts me when I get money because it doesn't. That's a setting that I'm going to have to set up. But I want to thank all of you. Now, sometimes y'all don't want people to know that y'all got extra money. So I'm not going to say no names except for one. Thank you, Dixieland Cartwright. Listen, the House of Grease, we love IMHO. We are seeing the glow up. We love the channel. We love everything. Keep up the good work. I'm going to have to get, once, once I get off this sick leave, once and for all and get my stuff together, I'm definitely going to become one of you guys' patrons. Cause, which, because, by the way, Dixie Lynn Cartwright is also one of my patrons. Um, we're going to pay that forward because we just love you guys on this channel. And I appreciate that. Um, since I'm saying this at the beginning, let me talk about a couple other channels that have given me love since the season started. Um, one of which is, of course, Nina Bonita Brown's channel. Y'all all know. Y'all see she be in the comments. You know, I fuck with her heavy. And also, Will My Finger Do? Glad to see you back, sis. Loving the looks. Loving your glow. Even though I know you a veteran. But I see the glow up on your channel, too. So I just wanted to say all that. Let's get the niceties out the way. Because, honey, if you're new to this channel, I jump around like House of Pain. And it's the perfect weekend to say that. Listen here. I ain't even about to get into the coronavirus shit. And just let me let you know, we're probably going live tonight. By the time we do that, I'll be editing this. So, that was stupid. Any old way. I jump around like House of Pain. And this time, I'm jumping to the goddamn end. Because what was that lip sync? What was that lip sync? Y'all. I got Drag Race UK vibes in a way that I didn't like. I skipped the whole part where the whole reason I was thanking people, that, I thank y'all all the time, um, my patrons and stuff like that, but the reason I was thanking them is because they were able to contribute for me to get a buttons and bows look ready. Y'all know I'm Kawhi, but I got a lot of bows, not a lot of buttons, and I didn't want to add buttons to any of the costumes I already had, so here we are. Um, the only reason why Nikki Doll was safe is because Dahlia didn't know the words. The only reason. Because that should have been a double sachet away, in my opinion. We already two episodes in where ain't nobody go home. We ain't counting Sherry Pie, even though I'm about to talk about her punk ass today. Um, and like I said, probably every episode. Um, that was horrible. I'm sorry. And that's a high energy song. You know, that lip sync was Horrible. Since we talking about Nikki Doll, let me tell y'all it was horrible and horrible. Okay? It was trash. It was trash. The runway, y'all, I was so excited. Also, shout outs to that special YouTuber. If y'all look at my very first episode, I have pinned their comment. Cause bitch, you guessing. You was right. Cause I seen all them balls. Now I ain't gonna say it was sports balls. But I'm definitely going to say the finale is balls. I'm going to go sports ball. Hell, if I can go out, coronavirus, if I can even whip something together, because when I'm going to be able to go to the store. But anyway, that's either near here or there. We talking about this episode, y'all. I 
Okay, that lip sync was terrible. To a good high energy song at that. I hate to say it. It was people I would have rather been in the bottom just because the lip sync would have been good. So, first of all, I was having a lot of technical difficulties. Because people are quarantined, because they are home, there was an overload on my internet. And the episode kept cutting off. So, eventually, I had to watch it on my phone. Um, and even that was messing up. So, I had to turn my Wi-Fi off to watch the episode on my phone. So, I did miss a couple key components. Um, but I'll talk about them as I get to them. So, let's start with... We got all the girls together. We find out some of them know each other. Blah, 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 blah. The main thing is, is our two winners from each episode, Widow Von Du and, oh, the other, Bo Broke, by the way. Widow Von Du, I forgot to put the damn, I'm all kind of, I got to ring this bow. Fuck, fuck it all. This episode wasn't worth it. Y'all better be happy I don't snatch this damn wig off because this episode wasn't worth any of this work. And when I tell y'all my face is motherfucking beat today, I don't always love what my face look like, but that, 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 that kawaii face, I'm good at that shit. My face is beat today. I'm mad. I wasted the goddamn makeup. Listen here. So we start off. Widow and Jada, who won, has to go to the opposite side and put the girls, of who they think is the biggest threat, to the lowest threat. They do that. The outfit that they had on, let me say this right now, because I'm really jumping around like House of Pain, because I don't even want this to be like no 30, 40 minute episode for this shit. Straight up. I'm pissed. I feel like Dolly when she walked out. I'm pissed. We finally get them all together and this episode was trash as hell and the goddamn sexual predator won the episode. Okay, moving on. Let's go. Um, so, they organize the people and then the two winners and the two people they ranked at the bottom are the captains and the category is improv reality show which alluded to it was America Idol but each group was a different reality show. This was trash, man. There ain't no niceties over here. This shit was trash. So if you like the episode and you mad because I'm about to tear this bitch down, it was fucking horrible. It was fucking horrible. Okay. So four different reality shows, four different groups, and they get together. So we have Aiden, Sherry, and Britta who were three girls, one brain, and said everything all at the same time. But it was supposed to be an improv challenge, so how the fuck do you do that if it's improv? Moving on, we had Heidi, Jackie, and Gigi. Heidi, Jackie, and Gigi was the um, sisters. The Del Rio sisters. I thought, hands down, they was the best. Hands down, they were the funniest. Hands down, Heidi ass should have won this challenge. That's who should have won. She was the team captain. She was underestimated going in. And she came through and really showed her personality and her talent. And it wasn't just dancing. And it was really, really good. That group in general was really, really good. I knew Jackie was going to be good. Gigi didn't do much. But even with her being the one that was dead for most of it, it was still entertaining. She even, she handled her business when she did get up. It was good. They were really good. So they was on America Idol. I forgot to say that. Aiden, Sherry, and Britta, I think, was on America's Got Talent. Widow, Nikki, and Crystal, who was the Squirrel Scouts. Um, I don't know what the fuck show. They was on Shark Tank. They was on Shark Tank. And Widow Von Du was the only person in that group that mattered. Because Nikki and Crystal is who I think should have been the bottom two. Because y'all were in groups of three, with the exception of the one group that had four. But y'all was in groups of three. And had it not been for Widow Von Du, y'all shit was unwatchable. It was horrible. But I digress. And then we had the Fruity Patooties. Jay and Jan, Dahlia and Rockham that was on Bad Girls Club, Jerry Springer. I don't fucking know. Um, cause we're fruits and a vegetable, and I'm like, wait, y'all didn't y'all didn't get the gay innuendo with fruit? Damn, y'all ain't watched Three's Company, nothing like y'all ain't not getting fruit. Okay, as my father calls them or used to call call them, 
you know, we are in a different day and age. I'm not going to say he's fully accepting, but he didn't get better with the name call on the fig bar. Because, you know, like a fig Newton, it's fruit on the inside. Listen. Outside, of, if everybody would have been a singing group and everybody was like on the same level and everybody was a singing group, I would have felt it more. First of all, you got four different groups that's on four different shows. And why are we doing a reality show, reality show challenge on a fucking reality show? I didn't enjoy nobody's performance except for the Squirrel Scouts. That's Squirrel Scouts, I'm sorry. The Del Rio Sisters. And I just think because their skit made more sense. Nobody else's skit to me made no sense. The Fruity Patooties made sense. But they ain't know what the hell to do. And doll your ass trying to be sexy as broccoli. Listen, I like broccoli. I do. I enjoy it. It's one of my favorite vegetables. I really like broccoli. But you know the stigma with Brussels sprouts and broccoli is that nobody likes it. So you want to try to be sex on ice as a giant piece of broccoli. Girl, what is you doing? But when she did have to turn on and it was the fight and she like head butting her. I was like, she did at least do that. Shit was fucking terrible, dude. Um, I was like really, really shocked that they um, picked Rock M Supercore last. Um, but they did. Um, a funny moment was when RuPaul told Crystal Method that she had El DeBarge hair. And I was like, she do it. She was like, I don't know who that is. Because it's not a requirement to know shit to be on fucking Drag Race no more. And that's sad. Because in the grand tradition of drag and queer culture period, it's, no, it's knowing these references. You know what I mean? Elder Barge, though I do believe he's straight. I could be wrong, but I believe he's straight. Was just like this very pretty man. In the 80s it was all about like the androgyny. And you're not going to tell me in the Rhythm of the Night video he ain't have on makeup. I know he did. You know what I'm saying? He was so, why aren't y'all knowing these references? It, it kills me. Anyway, I basically already said everything I had to say about the challenge. It was fucking trash. Um, the Del Real Trio, I thought theirs was cute. I thought it was cute. Because I believe, now this is one of the times that the internet had went out when they were like all structuring their things out. Well, I can already tell it's an improv challenge, but you had your, your, your character sheet or at least a general character sheet. I don't believe that, I think they, did they make that up? That they were going to be old doing it? It don't matter. It was funny. But I'm just questioning. It's an improv challenge, but it seemed like a whole lot of scripted to me. A whole lot of scripted. To me, but because I was having the troubles with the internet, I didn't really get to sit down and see them strategize on how they were going to go about doing their challenge. So I apologize. I can't speak on that. Um, when I do Untucked, and Untucked will be a Patreon exclusive. Um, I'll do that tomorrow. That will be a Patreon exclusive. I'll get into the stuff. I'll rewatch the episode and get into the stuff I missed. Um, the Patreon link is up there and down below. Um, horrible. This was the dumbest moment I seen like this. This that was the dumbest shit I ever seen. I didn't understand why it was all broke down and ugly. I do, but I don't. Because of Sherry Pie, and unfortunately, I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to talk about her this episode. There ain't no way around it. So I apologize, but there ain't no way around it. She won the challenge. I'm gonna have to talk about her. Um, because she is a theater kid. It's my assumption. Um, they, that they were ugly like that because they were like the three wise witches um, in Greek mythology. I forget exactly which play it is. I think it may be Hedda Gabler. Um, but like it's a Greek mythology about these three witches. And they did that. Like they all had one brand. And that may have been a reference to that and that might have been why they was all beat down and ugly because other than that, I didn't get that either. And of everybody else, everybody else looked like they had cohesive costumes ready. Why they look like they was just picking up leftover stuff out they drag. Like, okay, well, I got black and red, this, this, and this, and this, and this. I'm fucking confused. It was bad, you guys. It was bad.
Um, so we get to the end. Britta and Sherry are like, well, Aiden, we don't think you were a good leader. She wasn't. I didn't see it, but I could already tell you wasn't because you were the weakest out of that dumbass kid. And you got Sherry and Britta, who already know each other, who are these outgoing New York theatrical queens. And even your body language when you was on stage with them, you seemed odd. You were smart to pick the two of the stronger people. But you got shit on. And I would cram to understand that you might should have been in the bottom too. The only thing that made it a little bit better is because y'all were all in unison. It would be kind of hard to pick one to say that it was bad. Even though y'all could pick one to say it was good. Riddle me that shit. Now. We find out that Dahlia Sin has a twin brother. An identical twin. And my ears perked up like a goddamn dog. I'm sorry, what now? Because y'all know she the traitor of the season. It's going to be it's gonna be sad to see her go. You know that was the traitor of the season. Listen, I know I can't have none of these dudes, but I am um, straight. I do like guys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so... I mean, I guess I, I, I still identify as straight. But uh, what, what I'm saying is, is I like guys. So I was like, Rrr! and then I was like, oh, yeah, we're both gay. Aww. Sad. Um, moving on um, to I didn't really get a chance to like really get into any more mirror moments than that because I had a technical issue again. But considering the fact how bad this episode is, eh, pretty sure I missed shit. But. Because the same time I'm watching on my phone, I'm still trying to get it on my computer. So some stuff I got. That's nothing else. Let's get to the runways. Now, I didn't cut on just some other goddamn shit for these runways. So it's going to be real interesting to see how soon somebody else start doing this. Because I caught on to some shit. And I was like, oh, this is a better way to get visuals of the runway. Um, so I need to go to my photos. That's where I need to go. So they're not going to be in the order that they came out. They're going to be on the order that I got the pictures. So. The first person is Aiden Zane. Now this is very. The hair is very Harajuku decora. But you're going to do this whole Harajuku decor thing, look it up, where they have like all these barrettes and buttons and stuff all over them. And then you got on a hot pink sweatshirt with a few bows on it. Love what she did with the hair, because I guess, guess we're going to get that choppy hair that looks like it's just your real hair all the time. Um, and I love that all, like, the barrettes was, like, bows and buttons and stuff. I love that. But this being basically a Rue 21 sweater dress with a, a few little bows on it. The shoe was cute. She do something where she covers her shoes with, with her socks, and that's fierce. But, no. And then also the fact... I know buttons and bows is a very pink thing. I fought very, very hard for my outfits to not just be pink. Or even have that much pink association. Because I got some fabric that I was going to use. That I was like, no, nah, don't use that for the bows. That's too. It's already buttons and bows. That's too on the nose. Especially when your name is Jenny Pink. So, that's that. Um, the next person that I have is Britta. I probably have them in alphabetical order. Um, Britta in this coral satin look. This is adorable. This is adorable. I liked the way the buttons were incorporated with like the cutout. I liked the same bows around the shoes. Um, a good high pony with blonde is good for this look. It's, it's almost giving me legally blonde if it would have been pink. This was an outfit that I wouldn't have mind being pink because it's very, it's very, very... 60s Barbie. Um, it's very that. But it works. But I'm glad she didn't do it in pink. But it would have worked in pink. Um, very cute. 
Um, the next person I have is Crystal Method. Talk about my funny Valentine. Now, one thing that I will say is this. Talking about Crystal. Michelle Visage. Not the way y'all suck Trixie Mattel's dick. Not the way y'all suck... Um, not the way y'all suck Bianca Del Rio's dick. Not the way y'all suck Kim Chi's dick. If this is her makeup, this is her makeup. Make a comment about it if it's bad. You dig what I'm saying? I don't like that shit at all. Um, next we have Doll You See, and I hate this. I hate this. This was my category. This is one of my favorite categories that I would have ever liked to have seen on here. Buttons and bows. It's so kawaii. It's so cute. There's these weird bunny ears. The, 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 the floral placement. The asymmetrical. Like You're trying to do like this really girly look. And still make it high fashion. And it didn't work for me. And I hate the bunny ears. Something about the construction of them bunny ears look real, real off to me. And especially because when I heard what the category was, initially what I was going to do, I was going to do the Playboy Bunny. And I was going to have bunny ears because, you know, I'm a dollar store queen. So they got the ears. They got some fabulous ass ears. It's got like this iridescent fabric in the dollar store. I was going to get that. I was going to have the cotton tail button with the big bow on it, the big bow on the bodysuit. Um, what I actually wanted to do is I wanted to do like this Harley Quinn bunny. Where, like, the bodysuit was split in half. Like, kind of like Aiden Zane's entrance look. Um, and then play with, you know, the opposites. But, so, bunny is not unheard of for buttons and bows. But this, and then that giant bow around her neck is just on a ribbon. So, it's not, listen. Shouldn't nobody on RuPaul's Drag Race be doing shit that I do for my fucking drag. The bow's on my shoes. Because I didn't want to glue them to the shoe was on a ribbon and tied around. You shouldn't be doing shit that I'm doing with my uh, dollar store drag looks. And it's on RuPaul's Drag Race. And if you are doing it, it needs to be extremely elevated. Like, I, I hated this. I hated it. Bitch, can we talk about GG Goods? Look. Now, I didn't already told y'all asses I'm in the orange period. Creamsicle. All day. We in the orange period right now. Not only do I love a monochromatic look, but the fact that everything she had, down to the fucking glasses, the boots, everything. Because otherwise, it was just a very simple style. It was a, a blazer with some knee boots, some luggage. It was very simple. But everything except for the wig was covered in buttons. Just slightly different colors. Just enough to give it some dimension. And the wig, simple, clean, can't clock the lace. The earring, everything was covered in the same button. The only problem I have with it is, is it was buttons and bows and she ain't got no bow on. It was fabulous. But instead of having them sunglasses covered in buttons, why do I have a bow at the top of your head? Or why do I have a bow right here to cinch your waist? Because there was no bow. All buttons. But this is fucking fabulous, dude. Um, Heidi. Which I guess her name is Heidi Ho now because RuPaul just told her Heidi in closet was a bad name. So I guess she's Heidi Ho now. Not a bad drag name. Um, it's cute. Especially when she looked it up and had the cutouts. And that, like, that's really where the buttons were at. Really, really cute. But the thing is. Once you've seen Milk's Pinocchio. This looks amateur. This is something I could wear. I mean, this is something I can make for Drag Race. For a review. 
it's cute. I love when she explained the story behind it. That I'm a real boy. And like I said, she said, I like all that. But I ain't feeling it. Jackie Cox. I don't know who the hell the petties is. But I did get the period reference. I love that she has on the yellow sock with a pink shoe. I love when a drag queen, like, everything matches. It's drag. Um, it was just really cute. It was just really cute. Um, again, another pink look. But this time, um, paired with yellow. But it gave me very, um, Ross said, like, Halloween costume. I got period musical costume. Like, this is something that you would see in... A musical that was set around that period, like almost like My Fair Lady ish. Um, this is Jada. I mean, Jada really can't do no wrong, can she? It's a buttons and bows challenge. I mean, I was expecting people to go with the giant bow on their head. Fucking obviously. I was expecting it. I was here for it. Um, this is Black Barbie. Straight up and down. She used bows in an interesting way. She used buttons and bows in the most obvious way, which was to make buttons, earrings, and a bow, a giant bow on top of the head. But the fact that the jacket sleeves was just all bows. You know, bows on the shoes. It's just really cute. Like the hairstyle choice, it really complements the giant bow. Really cute. She looks like a Bratz doll. It's adorable. Bitch, Jan, you better do this shit. Jan? This burlap voodoo doll gown with this humongous bow. Bitch, you better do this. This was my favorite look of the night. Right here. Right here. This was my favorite look of the night. And then, like, the way it was cut out right here. And then it was like, because, you know, voodoo dolls, like, it's basically like a Listen, the way she got the headpiece where the burlap looked like it's a bang. Bitch, this is everything. A voodoo doll gown. Well done. I love this. Favorite look of the night, hands down. This is phenomenal. Phenomenal. She had the mask with the button eyes. But you know, then she's seeing her makeup. The face was painted right. With that burlap, she used like these pops of these primary colors with the red, yellow, and blue buttons. The red heart. The eye makeup is blue, but the lip is red, which y'all know I love. That's hooker makeup in my opinion, but I love a good blue eyeshadow, especially like a royal blue, a blue eyeshadow with a red lip. Love that. <sighs> Nikki doll. I love the concept. I didn't love the outfit. I know I'm going to be in the minority of that. I love the concept. I didn't love the execution. I get that she was Cinderella. I totally got that with the, the, the measuring tape and the needle. I, I got it right away. I don't think that the hairstyling went with you supposed to be Cinderella. I really don't. I would have rather you had a giant pin cushion on your head. Which I guess this is kind of maybe what it's supposed to be, but it's not reading. Um... The undergarments, the way it's laying, because it's supposed to be underneath. But before it gets to go into, like, the mermaid tail, it ain't quite right. And for real, that's all. If you was actually making a dress, that's all the crinoline that would be at the bottom. Like, that should have been more mermaided out. Um, I'm looking at it. I got this good picture of it now. It is cute. But I see what she was going for. I just felt like if you were doing that Cinderella storyline, I wish it would have been executed a little bit better. Like, your bow in the front ain't even a complete bow. It's like somebody is starting to make a bow. Any old way, let's get into Rock M. Sakura, who I was actually, which I love on Drag Race. She gave me something completely different than what I was expecting her to give. She's the anime girl. You know in anime, it is all about the bow, honey. It is all about the bow. It is very few anime characters that don't have a bow. 
somewhere. If it ain't on the costume, on the front of the uniform, in the hair, it's some on the shoes, it's somewhere. So for her to go this Alice in Wonderland slash Rapunzel route, very different. I like the fact that it was kind of Alice in Wonderland, but also the way the bow was. It kind of also looked like it was a cross between her and the white rabbit. I like this ridiculous long Rapunzel hair with just the bows going down the hair. I love a blue and white gingham anyway. I love a gingham period, but I love a good blue and white. Now, y'all say Alice in Wonderland. That's the only thing that I will say about it is when I see blue and white gingham, I'm thinking Wizard of Oz. I love the spectator shoe because, you know, Alice in Wonderland is always known for baby blue and white with that little touch of black. But overall, I really liked it, and I like the way her eye makeup is on this. It's pretty. I like it. What old Vaughn do? Now, if y'all watch the pit stop, no spoilers, and the Predator is out, and it's the coronavirus, so I don't even know if we get in the finale. Let me just put that out there right now. Like, I know they're supposed to be shooting the live finale, but unless they get this shit under control, I mean, DragCon wasn't until May. The finale is a couple weeks after DragCon. I wouldn't get your hopes up for an actual finale. But, um, Bob the Drag Queen had Sasha Valor on. Um, I think it was the last episode. It might have been the first one. And um, they were talking about like all the people that dressed like clowns on the stage. One. Boom. There it is. She's got this clown look. Now, I know she's a big girl, but I'm still not in love with the fit. Um, but outside of the fit of the pant, the peach and burgundy is a very striking combination. But I don't know if that reads clown to me. It more reads to me like more 70s. Almost like the old school creamsicle Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, but I love the makeup choice. And I love the polka dots. And I love that it went all the way down to the shoes. Overall, I dig it. I really love that makeup. For, for clown makeup, it's different. It's something we haven't seen before. Um, and the way that she incorporated the giant buttons. I like it. Um, was that it? Is that, is that it? Everybody go? Hell no, it ain't it. No, it was. That was everybody. Um, if you want to know my honest opinion, I'm not going to show Sherry Pye's look, even though she won. Um, but if she wasn't a fucking douche nozzle, she would have been my second favorite look. Because she gave me the kawaii that I was looking for in the challenge. When you give me buttons and bows, I automatically went to kawaii. Um, but at the end of the, the day, if I'm sitting here telling you the first thing I would have thought of is pink and bows and kawaii like that little girl style, then I wasn't the only one that thought that. And clearly on the stage, we've seen that a lot of people did think that. That was, though, when you get um, fashion photo reviews, little shit that they always get wrong. They're going to be like, the trend is pink, girly, baby doll. Because that is what you think when you think buttons and bows. And that's fine. I, myself, was like, okay, I'm going to give you my signature bow on the top of my head, but... Um, I didn't want to do like that kawaii silhouette word, like this flare it out. Um, I didn't want to do that. And that's why I didn't want to use the pink fabric that I bought. And I was like, I'm going to try to get something a little bit more, something else, even though it does have pink in it. But any old way, and my jewelry is pink. Okay, so here's your tops and your bottoms. Dahlia is in the bottom. Heidi is in the top. Jackie is in the top. Crystal is in the bottom. Um, Nikki is in the bottom. And Sherry is at the top. I don't think Sherry should have won. And that is. Got. Not a damn thing to do. With the situation. It doesn't. 
what does have with the situation is this time we got two black and white bumps. If y'all didn't know them was called bumps, you know, the message, that's called a bump. And y'all watch Adult Swim, y'all would know that was called a bump. Um, the bump, this time was like this was shot in 2009. In light of recent events, we have donated $5,000 to the Trevor Project. But did y'all donate? Well, she didn't win nothing, so she didn't get $5,000. But I'm just like, I appreciate the effort that you guys are making to make it right. And here's the dilemma with that. When I looked up what the Trevor Project was, because I didn't know, um, it seems to be like a help group for LGBTQ plus youth. Um, and like almost like a suicide prevention. So I went to look because I was like, well, did one of the people that she harassed kill themselves? Um, I understand this is a queer show, but me personally... And I could be wrong because I just looked at it briefly to see what the Trevor Project was, um, which is a great organization. But I felt like because of what happened, I felt like maybe it needed to go to, because all of her victims weren't queer, it needed to go to more of a group to support people that are victims of sexualized crimes. My opinion, but hey... We already know what the T is. It might be money going to a different charity every other week because she might have won five challenges. So maybe this is the first. So let me shut up. Because maybe they go, maybe they're going to give money to different charities every time. Hell, with everything going on with the coronavirus, once that shit help, hit, we hold real fucking hard. They might send it tail. We don't know. They have time before the episode comes out to decide what they're going to do. And it's a whole board of people and that shit is above my motherfucking pay grade to talk about. Um, but I do, um, I did look up the charity in passing. It seems like it's a good charity. It's a worthy cause. Um, so that's lovely that that happened. And again, it does kind of suck because with the girls not being able to go to drag con, you already have this tainted season. It's just sad. So again, I felt like Heidi should have won. Excuse me. I thought the bottle two should have been. Crystal and Nikki, unless she was going to put all three of them in the bottom. And how many of y'all, Hans, Bueller, Bueller, comment below and let me know. How many of y'all, once they said it was Dahlia and Nikki, was like, oh girl, bye Nikki. Because when once they said it was Ariana Grande featuring Iggy Azalea and Dahlia is House of Aja. I thought it was like a House of Edwards situation. Like, oh, these girls, not only do they look beautiful, but they turn the party. Because that's what I was expecting. That bitch ain't turning and shit, but a goddamn terrible performance. And then stormed off stage, mad because she went home first. Well, honey, you was trying to be sexy broccoli. Broccoli is a lot of things. Green, nutritious. Delicious once you become an adult and realize that it's tasty. Inexpensive. Easy to cook with. But I ain't never heard nobody accuse broccoli of being sexy. So why would you say I picked broccoli? And you picked broccoli. Because I heard you say that. And you picked broccoli. Girl, if I was you, I would have been the orange. Because you want to be sexy. Oranges is juicy. Oranges are kind of sexy. You, somebody eats an orange and the juice drip down. Out of all the fruits and vegetables that was up there, grapes are sexy. That's why they always be on like cheese and wine plates. That's sexy. Let me feed you a grape, baby. You want to be sexy. You picked the wrong part to be sexy. Straight up. That's my assessment of the episode. It was trash. That's good. My bows is crooked. But, but, but one thing about this episode I will love. I do appreciate these earrings and this necklace though. 
Because y'all know I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Well, shit. I'm a big black girl and the world is going to hell. Hope I can breathe. Before COVID, number is 19. Make sure your hands is clean. Oh, I did this on a live. We're going to end it with this. I did this on a live and I said, because the kids is all I got of school. You know, Ohio was the first state that like, really took the shit seriously and shut all the schools down. So I made up a little jingle. Well, I made up words to a song that's already a song. For everybody to be clean. And I'm about to forget it right now. What is it? Oh, if you have to, if you have to cough and sneeze, do a dab. <coughs> if you have to cough and sneeze, do a dab. <coughs> if you have to cough and sneeze, it's better on your sleeve. If you have to cough and sneeze, do a dab. <coughs> Keep it greasy. Do this. You, you want, you want to be like me. <laughs> you want to be like me. You want to eat lunch with the cool kids, don't you? Told you I used to be you, I know you. Never learned to crew politics in high school. Now you earn a few funny looks in my school. I can show you how to hypnotize minds, fool. Like the chicks in the bunny books for fly dudes. Why you? Cause I see your potential.